Good evening guys, welcome to La Casita's Virtual Kitchen. I hope you're all keeping well. Um, tonight we're doing another request that we've had. This is going to be our wild garlic arancini. So it's coming to the end now of the wild garlic season. So if you nip out, you're really quick, you might get the last of it. Um, but it is it's coming to the end now. But if you watched one of our previous videos and you made it and you've got it in the freezer, then we can definitely do this. I'm just going to get my pan on, get it warm. And I'm going to talk for the ingredients I've got down. So obviously quite important, the rice. Okay, now this is actually a paella rice. Um, it's absolutely perfect for risotto because it's quite starchy and it, and it gets a really nice creamy texture. But you could use risotto or boreo rice, anything like that. This is our wild garlic pesto. So you see it's nice and green. There's lots of packed full of flavour. We've got a little bit of time, which we're going to use to roast off our onions at the beginning. Some um, aged parmesan, you can use manchego if you want to continue with the Spanish vibe. The wild garlic leaves, we're just going to chop them and throw them in at the ends. A little bit of diced onion and a little bit of uh, garlic, some salt and a bit of butter. And then over to the other side we have the um, little bit of olive oil. We're going to start off with some white wine. And then this slightly strange coloured looking thing here is our wild garlic stock. So. We will put the methods and the ingredients down in the comments below so you can obviously have a look through there. But this is our, our wild garlic stock. First things first, just uh, start with a bit of olive oil in the pan. And then we're going to go in with the onions. So you want to sweat the onions, okay? So that's going to take out all the sort of nice natural sweetness of the onions, which is what we're looking for. We don't really want much colour on them. So we're going to scrape all that out. So there's half an onion in here and a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm just going to sweat things off. I'm going to go in with a little bit of butter at this stage, just to get it all started. And the thyme leaves here as well. So obviously the thyme, we're going to pick it all out at the end, so don't worry that there's, there's the stalks in there. When we come to rolling the arancini, we can take all those stalks out. So I'm just sweating this off. So it's quite important with the with arancini, it's, it goes against kind of classic risottos and, and stuff like that. I mean, obviously it is something different, but with the arancini, we need to kind of overcook the rice a little bit. So that's going to make it much easier when it comes to rolling it. Um, if we cooked it quite al dente, it's not that great for arancini. So we almost have to go against all the sort of risotto rules of al dente and kind of overcook the rice a little bit. Like I say, a couple of minutes on these onions just to get them sort of soften up. Another quite important part is when we're going to add the rice, we need to sort of toast it, okay? So you want the pan a little bit higher, we're going to toast the rice to get a bit of flavour onto the rice. And then we're going to uh, add the white wine and, and deglaze it with that. A little bit of salt over these onions to help break them up. Is a bit of a love affair with with, with uh, risottos and arancinis. You know they do take time and it is worth it. You get a lot of flavour into them and you know they are sort of really handy skill to have. But it is a bit of a love affair. We do have to keep keep working it, keep stirring it. That's how you get that really nice sort of creamy texture to them. So I'm just going to give these onions another minute. I'm just start to sweat down nicely. This is some. Always some lovely flavours, some garlic, some thyme, the, the sweaty onions, there's always some nice smells going on. Okay, lovely. so I'm going to go in with the rice. Obviously, depending on how many people you're making it for, I always uh, overdo the rice anyway, so just go in with the rice. And I'm going to toast this off. So we can turn the temperature up a little bit for this and get a bit of heat into the rice. Because when we add the white wine, we do want to hear a bit of a sizzle, okay? So get that temperature high and toast this off. A little bit more salt. It's quite important that as you add sort of new things to the pan, you do season it. Um, you, you know, you, you do need to continue the seasoning through the whole, the whole process. So we're just going to toast this for around 30 seconds. Just to get a bit of a uh, nice colour. wine now. You do want to hear a bit of a sizzle, okay, because we want to reduce it quick. We don't want it, you know, reducing for, for three or four minutes. So we want it reducing quick. Let's get all that alcohol off of it. 
So I always say when you're making anything like a risotto or arancini, it's, it's about getting flavour into it. So risottos can be quite bland if you're just putting, you know, chunks of ingredients in there. For me, making a stock, so in this case we've got the wild garlic stock and we're going to have a pesto. If you're making a butternut squash one, you can make a butternut squash stock. If you make a really nice, aromatic, punchy squash puree, you can add that to it and you're going to, you're going to get flavour to it straight away. If you're just adding, you know, chunks of squash, then you, you know, you're not really going to get the flavour you want out of it. So it's just something to bear in mind when you are making risottos or, or the arancinis is let's, how can we get you know, the most flavour into it? If you're making mushroom, let's, let's get some dried mushrooms, let's make a stock out of them, let's add the stock to it, let's you know, really start with a good base flavour. Okay, all this white wine is now gone. All I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly add this really sort of vivid green stock. So obviously this is going to give good flavour. This is literally just water blended with wild garlic leaves. So this is going to give good flavour, but look at that colour already. You know, it's already, it's already a colour that people associate with, uh, with, with wild garlic. It's, you know, with pesto, it's really green, really vivid. And that's, that's getting, off, it's getting us off to a good start. If you have missed the wild garlic season, um, you can do this perfectly with just a normal basil pesto. So, you know, again, follow our recipe to make a normal basil pesto and uh, you can make this without, but you are lucky enough to get some, amazing. Cool. So with this, literally, I just need to treat it with love now. I'm gonna keep adding the stock. I'm gonna keep moving it. I'm gonna keep stirring it. You, I can imagine most people have probably made, had a go and had a crack at risotto before. It's the same process. So. We're just going to reduce this down and we're going to keep adding stock to it. You're probably going to need to cook this rice for around 25 minutes um, and as you cook it it's obviously going to swell up and it's going to get kind of more creamy and that's kind of what we're looking for. I'm just going to season it a little bit more now like I said we've added a bit of stock so a little bit more salt and then we're just going to keep adding stock to this now and, uh, and we're just going to cook this out for around 20 minutes. Hey guys, so we've added the stock now, we've been adding it nice and slowly, our rice is, is cooked, it's slightly sort of getting to be overdone, so you can see it's sort of starting to get a little bit more creamier than it was before, got a beautiful green colour. I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit. So it's quite important now, obviously if you used to cook a normal risotto, you would go in with mascarpone or cream or whatever your kind of tipple was to, to add to your risotto. But obviously we, we don't want to do this for this because if you do add that then it's going to be too soft we're not going to be able to roll it and we're certainly not going to be able to deep fry it okay so we basically add the cheese we add a little bit more butter we season it up and then we're not going to add any sort of mascarpone or anything like that okay now that's enough stock and you're going to a bit more butter this is going to kind of make it all nice and a little bit richer and i'm going to go in with my parmesan so Literally, be as generous as you like. I really like my sort of risottos quite, quite cheesy and, and obviously with the, the punch that the um, parmesan adds. So just as generous as you like with it. We can always add more. So I'd start off with a little bit. We can always go in with some more. I'm going to see where that gets us. Go in with a little bit of salt. A little bit of cracked black pepper. For a bit of, uh, bit of heat. I'm just going to start to fold all this in now. You can see it's starting to get a little bit more creamier. I mean, we haven't even added the pesto yet, and it's, it's already that beautiful green colour. So now is the important part, just to keep tasting it. So obviously after you've added something, cook it out, have a little taste, see what else you need to add. And a bit more cheese. I've also got, I didn't quite mention it before, I've got a little bit of white truffle oil. It's, uh, it's optional, you don't have to use it. And a little bit of lemon juice, that's quite important at the end, just to, just to cut through all the richness and the, and the sort of fattiness of the cheese. So a little bit more of that. Now I'm gonna go in with the pesto. I'm gonna be quite generous, so a nice sort of spoon and a half. And stir that in. So you can just see that's going even richer, richer, darker, more vibrant green now. So while it's just warming through, I'm going to chop my wild garlic. 
turn that down to a gentle kind of simmer. Quite fine with the wild garlic, you know, you don't want massive big chunks in there. You can always use some chives, so if the wild garlic's not available anymore and you're doing basil pesto, you can, um, you know, chiffonade or chop a little bit of basil to go through. Or some nice finely cut chives is lovely as well. So we're just going to put that in, we're going to wilt that down. I'm going to go in with a little bit of truffle oil because personally I think it uh, adds a really nice sort of flavour. So a nice bit of white truffle oil. lemon in just the juice and then we can mix it up have a little taste you can always make this a day in advance this can sit in the fridge overnight and you can uh, you can roll these the next day that's absolutely fine as well so we're gonna have a little taste you can see the colors beautiful that the wild garlic is now wilted down so we're just gonna taste to see okay it's really nice really tasty really garlicky and rich and creamy from the parmesan it needs a bit more lemon Cut food. Just gonna fish out this. Uh, there's always one rogue one that goes in there. So we fish that out. I'm gonna put all this lemon. So that's about half a lemon in there. It needs a little bit more salt, and it needs a bit more truffle oil. So this is. I'm just tinkering now. You know, it, it's, it's perfectly nice. It's really tasty, but I'm being really perfectionist. I'm really just tinkering. Um, and this is all. This is all personal, you know, if you like it a little bit more sort of pesto or punchy, go, go a little bit more. So I think that's going to be it. I'm just going to have one last taste and then I'm going to go into my tray here. So as you can see, it's quite, this is not how you'd serve a normal risotto. Normal risotto for me just needs to kind of fall. So when you bash it, it just falls out to a nice even layer. So it's a little bit, a little bit firmer because we haven't added all the mascarpone or cream or anything like that that you would add. So last taste. Lovely. Okay. Turn this off now. No more heat. Into our tray. Scrape it all out. Don't want to waste any. And like I say, just spread it out, flatten it. We'll pick all the time out later, don't worry about that. So nice and flat. And a good little trick to cool it down quicker, you just put a few lines in it like this, just to kind of break, so it's not one big piece. Just kind of break it up a little bit, and it'll cool a little bit a little bit quicker still. So there you have it guys, there is our, our wild garlic arancini. We're gonna come back in a little while when it's set up, we're gonna roll it, we're gonna pan it, deep fry it, and we're gonna taste it. Um, and yeah, we'll see you very shortly for that. Thank you. Back guys to uh, La Casita's virtual kitchen. Down the front, we've got our arancini mix. So I've actually left this in the fridge overnight. Uh, it's become nice and firm. I've rolled the bowls into around 30 gram uh, size portions. A little tip, a little bit of oil on your hands when you're rolling it, just to stop it all sticking. And now what we're gonna do with them, I've got a pan of oil here, that's getting hot. So obviously we're gonna deep fry these. And I've also got my pan mixture in front of us. So what do we need for that? Just some flour. Plain flour, uh, egg. This is just mixed with a tiny bit of water. You could use milk if you prefer. And then just at the end, the crispy, the panko breadcrumbs with a little bit of black onion seeds. And then I've made just a tiny bit. Goes really well with the arancini. It's just a little bit of sun-dried tomato, aioli, a little bit of salt for the top. Job done. So I'm just gonna, for the purpose of the video, I'm just gonna pan here off sort of four or five of these. So as you can see, they're nice and firm. I did roll them and I did leave them in the fridge for another sort of 30 minutes just to kind of make sure they were nice and firm. So just dust off all that flour into the egg. I'm gonna make sure it's a nice even coating. Obviously if you're doing a lot more, there's, uh, it's easy to have bigger tubs for this. Okay. Right. Drain off the excess egg into the breadcrumbs. We do always get a bit messy when we're panning, don't worry about that. Okay, we'll put them onto the plate. If the shape's gone a little bit, don't worry for now because we can just re-roll them before we deep fry them. Okay, the oil needs to be around 180 to deep fry anything. So we've had it on for around 10 minutes, nice and slow. I'm just gonna test the oil a little bit. So we use a little bit of the breadcrumb that we've done 
you should see a nice little, well, it should start to basically kind of fizz and, and fry. You can already see that starting to happen. So we're going to go in with the arancini. I'm just going to reshape them a little bit, just so they're nice and round. And then let's be really careful, let's put them on the spoon into the oil, okay? We're going to roll them around, so the little bits above the top, don't worry. That's all we can do, we can just roll them around. And you can deep fry these around sort of two to, well, around, around two minutes, just so they get a nice golden brown. Okay, I'm just going to get my uh, slotted spoon, my metal spoon. I'm just going to move these around slightly. You can have a little look, they're already starting to colour, so they're already starting to go nice and golden, that's exactly what we want, but obviously we need to nice even colour in. So do move them around a little bit. Even better if you've got a deep fat fire at home, obviously you've just got your basket and you can shake them and it's much easier. Wonderful, so it's had about two and a half to three minutes. We're going to pull them out, they're going to be a beautiful, nice golden brown, look at those. Onto our kitchen paper. So because these have had sort of two and a half, three minutes, there's no need for these to go in the oven. These are going to be nice and hot. Really nice, if you wanted to do with this, what you can do is you, you get those little um, small mozzarella balls and you can kind of mould your arancini mix around this mozzarella, pan it that and deep fry that. Obviously they'll be a bit bigger, but you can have a beautiful little mozzarella, a little cheeky secret. Okay, so they're done. Uh, I'm going to go on with the sun-dried tomato aioli. Just a, you know, just a little bit extra flavour on there. Arancini's on. One on top. Gonna to season them up. And a bit of salt. A little bit of the onion seeds for, for a garnish. And there we go, I'm just gonna, I've got this fifth one here, I'm just gonna cut that for you so you can see the inside of it. You can see it's uh, really nice and sort of moist inside there. It's a wild garlic arancini, really tasty. It's another classic, maybe not Spanish, but we've had it on the menu and it's proven very popular. And like I said, it has been a, you know, it has been something that somebody's asked for. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to the La Casita Cooking Channel. Um, Ring the bell for any notifications for new videos that we're going to post and please leave comments again if you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time and bye-bye. Uh,